Hello everyone, this is the third part in our series of tutorial videos for the EM solver and more specifically its application to electromagnetic metal forming. In the previous video we talked about what happened to the EM fields within the conductor. In this video we're going to talk about the interaction of the EM fields between the conductors. So in the previous part uh, we saw that an important mesh size criteria was uh, the capture uh, of the current diffusion through the surface through the thickness of the conductor. So um, we discussed about an important quantity that we needed to estimate before any problem set up. Um, it was called the skin depth or the decay rate of the current. Um, so it was also observed that uh, you know this alternating or fast rising current uh, was also generating a magnetic field both in the conductor but also in the air surrounding it. So what happens uh, when you bring another conductor into the equation? This is what we're going to see in this video. So this time we will use as an example a typical electromagnetic metal forming configuration. On one hand you have a conductor carrying a source circuit, basically a coil that you plug to a generator. Uh, this coil will then create a magnetic field. Now on the other hand you have a workpiece. If this workpiece is made of is made out of an insulator material, uh, such as wood, for example, then nothing will happen. The magnetic field lines will go through that workpiece and simply ignore it. Uh, if the workpiece is made out of a conductor, but when you calculate the skin depth, you realize that its value is a lot bigger than the thickness of the conductor itself, then it's the same thing. There will also be no or very little interaction between uh, the workpiece and the coil. Okay, This is what you see below in the sketch there. The magnetic field lines completely ignore the workpiece. Now, if the skin depth of the workpiece is lower than its thickness, then an induced current will appear in that workpiece. It will, also, it will then also diffuse through its thickness. Uh, this is what we saw in the last part. Um, it's like what you see below there on the sketch. The workpiece will be visible to the magnetic field lines and it will deviate their path. So basically uh, it's this combination of inductive and diffusive effects that make the eddy currents. Okay? Both are coupled together and both need to be solved and captured. So we have seen previously that the conductors were meshed and that the EM fields such as the current density diffusion were solved via finite elements. Okay? However, in order to solve the interaction between conductors and to get you know, the, the interaction between them, this inductive effect, uh, the solver uses a boundary element method, also called BEM method. Instead of having to mesh the entire domain and doing a full FEM-FEM analysis, the solver will create a skin mesh on the surface and solve the interaction between those elements by using a double integration law called biot savart So this result in a coupled FEM-BM system, where you don't have any air mesh. So, what are the consequences of this choice of a FEM-BM system? For our type of application, uh, it's almost mandatory uh, to do something like this, uh, because since uh, the applications that we have, um, you know, electromagnetic metal forming, but also welding, crimping, or bending, uh, or tube expansion. They all involve severe and rapid deformations. So having a robust method which allows such calculations to be stable and computationally efficient, it becomes essential. So for us, we really need um, an FEM-BEM system. Yeah, on top of that, uh, there's a couple of other things. Uh, it's easier to handle small gaps between conductors uh, where you have complex conductor shapes. Uh, another point is also that you uh, don't have to do any artificial approximations uh, at the simulation zone boundary, such as you would have to do if you had to uh, build a mesh for the air. You would have uh, um, a box, basically, that is meshed. One important drawback, though, uh, is that the BM system is dense, which means long matrix assembly times and also solving times. Uh, all, on top of that, uh, you also need big memory requirements. Okay, so we do have optimization techniques, of course, but um, still, it takes time to solve a FEM-BM system. Um, so really, it becomes really powerful when you have big deformations, uh, 
But the drawback is when uh, your problem is static, uh, then it might be less efficient than if you had uh, a pure uh, FEM, FEM method. Uh, another important point, uh, which I really want to emphasize here, uh, is that I showed in the previous videos, uh, I showed a, a couple of times um, some magnetic field lines in the air. Uh, those magnetic field lines are simply a post-treatment quantity that LS Prepost calculates and displays. It has nothing to do with the calculation. It does not give any indication about the accuracy of the results. It's just a tool for the user to better understand uh, what is going on, but it's purely for visualization purposes. It's completely unrelated to the calculation. So uh, what I did here um, is that I downloaded uh, this example from the uh, Dyna example website. It's this metal forming uh, classic case. Uh, it's made out of uh, three parts. So you got uh, part number two, uh, which is an insulator here. It's the die, but we're not going to uh, talk about this one here. It's of no interest to us um, right now. And then we have those two parts here. One of them uh, is the coil and the other one uh, is the workpiece. So. Uh, it's, it's, it's this typical uh, magnetic metal forming application. Okay, um, I just did a few modifications uh, to the case. Okay, I simplified it uh, a little bit on the electromagnetic uh, side. Okay, I removed some a lot of keywords which we haven't mentioned yet. Um, the one thing that we can notice here is that uh, our coil here has got an electromagnetic material of type two, which means that it's connected to a circuit, which you see defined here. Okay, uh, and then our workpiece uh, is of type four, which means uh, that's a conductor, uh, which can allow uh, induced currents. Okay, um, and then what I did, the other thing, uh, important thing that I did is that I uh, made every material rigid and I constrained all the parts. Okay, so they're not allowed to move because I'll talk about. Uh, the interaction in the next video. So uh, here both the coil and the workpiece are static. Okay. Um, so if you run uh, this uh, this problem, okay, uh, the first thing that you can notice, we had this also in the other cases, but uh, uh, let me introduce it uh, here now. Uh, so we have those parts, conductor, uh, those two con uh, solid parts, but when we also have those ML sh MS shell parts here. So what are those? those two things. Well, this is the BEM mesh that the solver automatically creates based on the surface elements, okay, the faces uh, of your solids, sorry, um, and uh, it creates those parts and it uses it to calculate the interaction, okay, uh, between those two conductors, okay, so that's the only purpose that those MS parts have, okay, so it's for you to check that the BEM mesh has been built correctly, okay, just a the post treatment. So now, if we look uh, at our two conductors here, okay, uh, I have my part number three, and if I look at it and I look at the current density, I see that there is current that has been created in this workpiece. This current comes from the coil right here, okay, if I animate it like that. Um, and if I create those magnetic field lines, okay. I see here that they can't escape. Basically, they're blocked by the workpiece. Okay, so all of this um, goes together. Okay, so again, uh, let me just uh, uh, remind you, uh, insist on that a little bit. Uh, those magnetic feed lines, which I'm creating here, this is purely a post-treatment um, capability that LS Prepost has. It's not related to the EM solver uh, at all. And actually, uh, sometimes it fails. I, I found one here. I know this one also works. Uh, at one point, I find sometimes those magnetic field lines they will fail, okay. But if they do, it doesn't mean that the calculation is not correct, okay. Um, it just means that the algorithm that calculates those field lines uh, has is not robust enough. Um, but nonetheless, in this case, it's interesting because it allows us to see uh, the effect that the workpiece has. Uh, on the other hand, uh, another thing which I did, I uh, did a second run. Uh, but what I did is that I changed the conductivity of the workpiece. Okay, I changed it instead of having 25 here, I changed it to 0 0.025. Okay, which basically means um, that I'm increasing the skin depth. Okay, 
of the workpiece, which is now a lot bigger than its thickness. So uh, after doing that, I got something like this. Okay, so uh, I still have current density. Okay, in the workpiece, there's still a little bit of induced current. After all, it's still a conductor. Okay, but compared, hang on, if I compare the order of magnitudes between the two cases, I see that it's about 50 times less current, okay, between the two of them. And what's interesting is if I also try to plot some field lines here, I get something like this. You see the field lines completely ignore, almost completely ignore, the workpiece that you have here. Okay, so again, if I put them side by side, Going to do that, it's a bit hard. Okay, here in this case, coil generates magnetic field, the magnetic field generates induction and diffusion of the current here in the workpiece. Okay, in this case, skin depth is higher than thickness of the workpiece, so very little uh, induced current, okay, and even less diffusion of the current, and the magnetic field lines basically completely ignores the workpiece. Okay, so this is a summary of eddy currents basically. In, metal, in magnetic metal forming applications what you do is that you set up a coil geometry, you set up a circuit okay, with an alternating or fast rising either current or scalar potential difference. Okay, This generates, you know, um, you, the solver automatically generates um, this BEM system and solves this BEM system and this allows uh, the solver to have induced Currents, okay. Um, where do I have it here? Induced currents, but also you know magnetic fields in the workpiece, and this is where uh, I want to conclude with this. Uh, this we'll see in the next part is that when you have induced currents combined with magnetic fields, you get something very interesting. You get a force, okay, which is called the Lorentz force. We're going to mention it later you get a Lorentz force here, force vector. And we're going to see later in the next video the effects, how to couple this uh, with the solid mechanics solver. Okay. And um, similarly, okay, you also get heating. It's called here the Ohm heating power okay, in the workpiece. So uh, we'll also see how this heating um, can be combined with the thermal solver uh, in the next video. So in summary, um, what we have seen here is, uh, well, we have introduced uh, the typical electromagnetic metal forming uh, case where there's a conductor carrying a source circuit, um, you know, we call it a coil, and a workpiece. Uh, this alternating uh, or fast rising current which is generated in the coil uh, will generate uh, a magnetic field. And due to diffusive effects, uh, this magnetic field will uh, generate an induced current in the workpiece. Okay, and it's this combination of those uh, inductive diffusive effects which are called the eddy currents. Um, the next point is that, and this is what we're going to talk about in the next video, uh, is that those induced currents which are created in the workpiece, combined with the magnetic field in that same workpiece, will generate a force, uh, which we're going to talk about later, an electromagnetic force, but it will also generate some heating. Okay, and in the next video we'll see how to couple those uh, terms with the solid mechanics solver and the thermal solver. One important point here uh, is that the solver uses a FEM method in order to solve the EM fields in the conductors, uh, but in order to uh, take into account to solve for the interaction between conductors, it uses a BM method where no air mesh is necessary. Okay. Uh, so this results uh, in this combined FEM BM system. And the big advantage, uh, well, first of all, for the user is that it simplifies pre-processing a lot. Uh, there is no volume mesh to build uh, or to take into account. Okay, uh, But also the fact um, that there is no air mesh means that you can have a more stable and accurate solve and also faster uh, in cases where there's moving conductors. The drawback uh, can be that uh, the long assembly times of the BM matrices. But again, uh, we'll talk more about this uh, and the consequences in the next videos. Alright, thank you for watching and see you for the next part.